Telomeres are the caps at the end of our chromosomes, and they shorten with age. Anti-aging medicine is using telomeres as a biomarker to assess our body's true rate of aging. Today, we'll talk with Dr. Mark Tager and learn how we can turn back the clock by slowing the rate at which our telomeres shorten. Major funding for Immortality Now was provided through an educational grant from EnviroMed Sciences. EnviroMed Sciences offers exclusive NASA and NSF certified technologies that remove more than 99% of indoor air, water, and surface toxicants. Get peace of mind protection for your home, family, and office. To learn more, go to EnviroMedSciences.com. Hi, this is Dr. Ron Klass in Hollywood, Florida. We're at the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine International Congress of Anti-Aging and Regenerative Medicine. Our guest today, Dr. Tager from San Diego, San California. San Diego, California, is going to be uh, speaking with us about a very important topic, a new technology in anti-aging and regenerative medicine, and that is telomeres. Dr. Tager, yes. your background is as a primary care physician. Correct. And for the last several years, you've been an educator. For Well, pretty much all my career, I've been an educator. Yes. I think the best physicians are educators their entire careers. Certainly. And your background, really? In family practice. Originally. Family practice and functional medicine, preventive medicine. Yes. I've been very involved in regenerative medicine and stem cells as well. That's excellent. And so your interest right now is in telomeres. Well, I have a broad set of interests. I, I, I think it's very difficult to know that there's 20,000 peer-reviewed articles out right now on telomeres, and to not feel this, in, this incredible sense of urgency to learn about this science and to see how it's really the ultimate anti-aging measurement. Because, you know, everything else we do, in, in a sense, is we can improve inflammatory biomarkers and we can... Um, get uh, uh, other indices of, of risk factors. But ultimately, if we turn back the clock or we slow that aging process, that will best be reflected in telomeres. Now, very briefly for the listeners out there who are not familiar with telomeres, what are telomeres? Give us the telomere Certainly. 101. <laughs> well, telomeres are the end caps, the non-coding end caps of the chromosomes. And, uh, you know, you've got chromosomes vary in their length, but they're 250 million uh, base pairs. Telomeres are the base pairs of the very, very end, the very small endings of the chromosomes. So what happens when every time the chromosome divides, and that's usually 50 to 70 times over our lifetime, that's called the Hayflick limit, what happens is the telomeres shorten just a little bit because the DNA machinery can't copy the very last lagging strand. So you might think of it as a sort of a salami or organic uh, non-GMO tofu, let's say, <laughs> and where you're slicing a little bit. Yes. And eventually what happens when you get so small, the, the cell shuts down. It goes into replicative senescence. And it does that to protect the uncapped ends of the chromosomes from fusing and causing mutations. But if that's the case, why hasn't anyone died of short telomeres? Oh, people do die. We, that's exactly what we die of. Uh, that's ex precisely what we die of. We die, a cell dies when it is no longer capable of reproducing. And what happens as we shorten those telomeres, we get to a point, no one's exactly sure uh, where that point is, but the cell has to stop. Now, the, what happens in cancer is that there is an enzyme called telomerase. It's expressed in germ cells and stem cells. And its function is to elongate and put back just a little bit more of those base pairs onto the chromosome. And what happens in cancer is that telomerase ex is expressed, and then the cell becomes immortal. But the, the way it does that is through the, the expression of telomerase and the continually growing. But if we look at 110-year-olds, their cells are still dividing, and they still have, uh, you know, they're, they're certainly not, 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 not ending their life's life because they're not, they're not dropping over because their cells have stopped dividing. Their cells um, continue to divide. Well, you have to think about the heterogeneity of organs and organ systems. So you start out in utero with 15,000, maybe 20,000 base pairs, or 15 to 20 kilobases of, of telomeres. When you're born, that's down to 10 to 15 kilobases. Then what happens is that each year you live, 
a little bit of the salami. Uh, the tofu gets sliced off, and he plays from several dozen to several hundred kilobases. Now, what happens is what anti-aging really is, in my mind, is the lifestyle habits, the exercise, nutrition, what you eat, nutritional supplementation, um, all of the great therapies that we have today are essentially shortening and slowing down that process. So does that person who's 110 have the same length uh, telomeres that he or she had at a very young age? No, they're shorter. But they have slowed the process whereby they have aged and those telomeres have um, shortened. This process is what defines aging, actually. And we slow it down. Now remember also that tissues are heterogeneous. So, and people, um, their, their telomere attrition rate is also heterogeneous. So your heart may be slowing down at little different rates than your brain or your skin. So it, it's a fascinating field. And, and increasingly what we're seeing, we're seeing pharmaceutical companies start looking at telomerase and, mm -hmm. and either cutting it back with cancer or trying to uh, enhance it to live longer. We're seeing uh, supplementation, looking at telomerase also as a way of, of extending those, those telomeres. And which supplements uh, are being reported as having a beneficial effect? Well, you know, if you look at the, the, the first uh, telomerase study, was really the work done by uh, Dean Ornish in uh, San Francisco in the Gleason 6 trial. And what they did is they took uh, men with Gleason 6 prostate cancer. And it was a very small group, and they had a control group of 25 and only a treatment group of 10. And what they found is those, the individuals in the, in the active group that went on the Ornish program actually had longer telomeres and showed enhanced telomerase activity. So small study, uh, we don't know that. There's some work being done now with astragalus, uh, looking at whether that, in fact, extends um, and uh, it cuts down the rate of telomere attrition and actually enhances uh, telomere length as well. What is your advice to the clinician, to the patient, who uh, might be concerned about uh, a premature uh, shortening of their telomeres, uh, and uh, what can be done to uh, improve the situation? Can anything be done to improve sure. the situation? Well, I would postulate that uh, most patients don't even know they've got telomere shortening. So what this is is a, an educational tool. I mean, it's the way we, I mean, some years ago we started talking about inflammatory biomarkers, but no one had heard about inflammatory biomarkers very much. So we very much have an education uh, process, both to the physician and to the patient. So we see patients who come in and they are concerned about anti-aging. They want to live long, they want to live well. So what this does is this presents an incredible snapshot uh, in time to show a patient where he or she is with regard to both the absolute length of the, uh, the average, but also the specific critically short telomeres as well. Now, what do you do with that information? Maybe one of the goals would be just as we do um, lipids on a periodic basis or we do anything else in an annual kind of preventive personalized checkup, just think how impactful it might be to have telomeres every year for three or four or five years in a patient. And we're really able to, to look at their rate of aging and see whether or not exercise, nutrition, stress management, um, the, the appropriate supplementation, uh, whether that can really start slowing this rate of aging. So we're not there yet. We're not able to say that if you take additional vitamin C or E or astragalus or human growth hormone, testosterone, we're not able to say that these things will have a positive effect on either slowing telomere shortening or um, re-lengthening it. Okay, so today there are 120 peer-reviewed papers on exercise. So I can tell you with certainty that if you exercise you will slow down the rate of telomere attrition. And how much exercise is that? Uh, the study that I've, I've seen, actually, there was a, a, an excellent study done by Elizabeth Blackburn at the uh, Nobel Prize winner at the University of San Francisco. And she took 63 women who had high scores on the perceived stress scale. And what she did was looked at those in, that had high telomeres, long, nice, long, healthy telomeres, and those who had short telomeres. And looking at the buffering effects of exercise, so she was able to find that in women who exercise three times a week vigorously for 40 minutes at a time, that was the point at which the, it 
uh, stop shortening uh, prematurely uh, the telomeres. So that's about the you know what the guidelines. You know, move your body, get out, move your body uh, three, four times a week for 40 minutes vigorously. Now, but there's there's good data on omega threes. There's good data on the Mediterranean diet. There's good data on antioxidants, mindfulness, stress management. So there's a I mean there's thousands, literally thousands of papers that have accumulated. So what we can see is that there is a that there is a real connection between lifestyle. Well, it's certainly very interesting, um, and it would be wonderful to have a reliable biomarker of aging that could be used universally. Thank you. Real honor. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Tager. Pleasure. For the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine for Immortality Now, I'm Dr. Ron Klatz, wishing you a long, healthy, successful, and happy lifespan. And to learn more about this topic and others in anti-aging medicine, regenerative medicine, go to worldhealth.net the official website of the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, and you'll be able to uh, review our materials, find a physician, and uh, learn uh, the important new technologies, the important new news in the field of anti-aging medicine. Immortality Now is made possible through an educational grant from EnviroMed Sciences. To learn more about how to get living water in your home or how to order your free home toxicity test, go to EnviroMedSciences.com. Additional support was provided by Energy Development, better health through non-invasive technology. For more information, visit energydev.com. By Global Life Rejuvenation, connecting patients with doctors who practice anti-aging medicine, including bioidentical hormone replacement therapy for men and women. To learn more, go to globalliferejuvenation.com. And by OnDemand. This non-invasive therapeutic approach uses biofeedback and pulsed electromagnetic stimulation to help patients improve their stress tolerance. To learn more or to find a practitioner near you, go to ondamed.net.